Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Evening on the Porch, written by Rugi, 2001. How old are you, Aaron? Twenty-one this year. Why? Peregrine shrugged, taking a sip of the beer. Is that a lot for your species? Meh. I'm not a kid anymore. I see. The cicada sang as the two sat in the hot summer evening. The old porch squeaked with every little motion under the weathered white paint. Now and then, a fresh breeze came through the woods, relieving both of the human and the Athunan from the heat. I like beer, said Pirigri. Glad to hear it. It's good. Aaron scoffed, raising the bottle to his lips. No shit, Sherlock. As stars gradually appeared in the sky, the first moon, Luna, rose over the horizon. The view of the Milky Way was as beautiful as ever at the ranch, where nothing could hide their shine. Who is this Sherlock you sometimes mention? You'd like to know, don't you? Yes, that's why I asked you about it. Our inside at his friend's lack of humor. Sarcasm appeared to be a human thing in the galaxy. He placed a half-empty bottle down and leaned backward, propping up with his elbows. It's an old fictional character, a detective whose perk was the ability to deduce almost anything from seamlessly useless shit. He was created in the 19th century, if I remember correctly. Albert Cannon Doyle wrote him. Peregrine looked at him for a moment. His tail flicked against the wooden planks. Was the 19th century a long time ago? Yes. How distant? Aaron tilted his head. What? How long ago was it? He rephrased. The young man started counting in his mind, his fingers tapping against the swelled wood as he mulled over the question. The old oak in the backyard rustled in the wind. The 19th century started 777 years ago, Earth calendar, and lasted a hundred years. How long is a human year? A day here lasts 27 hours. A day on Earth is 24, which means that if you split the day into 27 parts and take... He shook his head. He pointed to his phone and opened up the clock app. Every tick of this lancet is a second, and a full circle is a minute, 60 seconds. Sixty minutes is in an hour, twenty-four hours is in an Earth day, three hundred and sixty-five days in an Earth year. Also, every four years we add a day, a century. Why? Uh, something to do with the odd hours in our planet's rotation. A century is a hundred years. While his friend did the math, counting on his four fingers, Aaron put his phone away and gazed at the stars, resuming his bottle of beer. The second moon, Selene had risen behind the tree's foliage, following Luna's path in the sky. That's uh, not much. Aaron raised a single brow. What isn't? All of that. A century. Seven centuries. Seven hundred and seventy-seven years. It's just, uh, not much. For the universe, maybe. Seven hundred years is more than half a millennium. In the nineteenth century, we didn't even have flight. Dolthanon turned around. His lanky figure an odd fit in the human porch. Then how did you get here? Naren looked at his friend. Even sitting on the decking, Irigri was near the eye level with someone standing. What? How did you get here? The Athunan repeated, twitching his ear. He was adorable doing so. He looked like a cat, which was the reason he was trying to lose the habit. Humans would pet anything they found cute even if bigger and older than them. The singing of the cicadas became the only sound between the two as Aaron tried to understand what these alien friend meant. A gust of wind carried over, bringing the scent of rain. Here as in, here as in on this planet, I, uh, was born here? Pirigri pinched the bridge of his nose, half as long as a human's, closing his eyes. I'm serious, how did your species get you? I'm, you lost me. With a spaceship? The blue alien groaned. No, I don't mean like how technically. On whose spaceship, Owls? Please answer me. Aaron stopped him, uncertainly giving away to the question. Why, are you saying that it's not possible for humans to reach a planet on their own? You said it. 
You said that you started developing flight after... That you didn't have flight technology yet in the 19th century. So, so, Aaron, stop circling me around, I mean... uh, The human chuckled as his alien friend used the figure of speech, which did not translate, and raised a hand to stop him. Puritry was still new to this human race. He had arrived just a few months earlier. His English was still clunky. I'm not kidding you. I'm lost. I don't get what you're confused about. I'm saying that if 700 years ago you didn't have flight technology, how come you now have FTL ships? Aaron tilted his head. He cleared his throat, still lost, but tried answering by repeating what he remembered from history class. We developed flight technology in the 20th century, and by the end of the 21st we perfected sublight space travel, colonizing Mars and Venus. By the end of the 23rd century, we organized our first interstellar trip on generational ships. Sixty years ago, in the 21st century, we finally achieved FTL with the black hole curvature engines, and now we move through the stars exactly like you. Puricry looked at him dead in the eyes without blinking, his mind gears grinding somewhere, then spent a full minute counting numbers while his lips moved without speaking. He looked like a statue, the yellow light from the kitchen window reflecting on his blue striped fur with a greenish shimmer. Finally, the switch clicked, he smirked. You're kidding me! What? No. Won't even be the joke here. The human laughed, surprised. Maybe his friend had not got what a sentry was. He took out his phone and opened the clock again. It's too short. Your species couldn't possibly reach this technological growth that fast, repeated the Athenon after hearing the explanation a second time. What do you mean by so fast? It's been seven centuries. That's enough time to, uh, to let an empire die. Arun, stop. A good joke is a short joke. Arun looked him dead in the eyes and said, I'm not joking. From the first half of the 20th century to the first half of the 25th century, five centuries is all the time it took for us to go from pre-flight to FDL. And we did it alone. Peregrine seemed puzzled, his spear forgotten on the side. My, how long did it take you? Aaron wasn't exactly a cultured man. For his short life, he had received a basic education before starting work at the ranch at 16. He had the knack for boxing, but wasn't good enough to join the regional bouts there on Plural Luna 2, and the few things he knew about space travel were from his dream of leaving the planet and traveling the cosmos. It wasn't the first time he was ignorant of Athenons, beyond the little bits of culture he had been exposed to over the years, the biological fact that they crapped some of the most acidic things in the universe, as taught by a melted chemical toilet of summer 2515, where grass still refused to grow and some words in their language. Aaron didn't know squat about them, even more so about their history. He didn't know jack about that. In human years, uh, we went from pre-flight to FTL in... uh, 2,500 years, give or take. Aaron didn't know whether it was a long time or not. It was a lot more than the humans, but the universe is a large place. Others were bound to have different timings. That's, uh, a b- bit long, he still replied. He wondered how ancient Athwan history had to be if he remembered that they had gone FTL long before Gutenberg could even think about the print. Can't blame us. Everything is, compared to humans. What do you mean? You are faster than everyone else in the galaxy. Not just your biology, your society as a whole. A biology? You mean like, uh, in bed? Peregrine burst into a low, hoarse sound, which was his laughter, his tail sweeping the floor. (laughs) No, I don't mean the bed. From what I can see, you got a stamina to spare. Sarah's not gonna leave you, don't worry, he winked. I mean, in your time. You turned into an adult in barely two decades. It's about just five years on Plural Luna. Well, uh, Aaliyah here is four on Earth, so it's a bit... What I mean, the Orthanon, cut him off over the flick of his wrist, is that your species as a whole seems to have a taste for speed. It's imprinted on you. How long did it take you to reach adulthood? Aaron had known his friend for just a month and a half, since when he had taken up work in the ranch, partially due to the different biology, partially because he didn't really care 
He'd never questioned his friend's age past the superficial, are we somewhat peers level, seeing how they apparently had somewhat the same mental age. Forty-five human years. The young man stopped in surprise. The bottle raised mid-air. He wondered if his best friend was a middle-aged man. He shook off the idea. Different biologies meant different life cycles. That's, um, long, he commented. Compared to humans, and that's still over. The astronaut stopped. He gazed fixated on the oak while his lips mimed alien words. Wait, Aaron. I've seen photos with you and Sarah dating back to last summer. So, the young man said tentatively. Yet you say you became an adult this year. Yes. For my species, adulthood has reached upon sexual maturity. What is uh, adulthood for you? Aaron grabbed a new brew, opened it with the pit of his elbow, and took a long sip. The question was tricky. Adulthood is the age by which we are legally allowed to vote and drink alcohol, and is reached at our 21st birthday. We reach full sexual maturity around the same period. Between eighteen and twenty years old, Peter Green turned around and raised an eyebrow, slowly sipping his beverage. Fool! Technically speaking, we start being sexually active around eleven and thirteen years old. It's the same age we start changing. Full maturity is when our bodies stop doing that, and we turn into adults. In between is adolescence. That's, uh, he murmured without completing his thought, lowering his bottle. His long ears twitched. Aaron nodded. Fascinating, yes. Also, the reason we take this long is because our brain is actually way more complicated than any other species from Earth. This is long for you, he interjected, his poker face gradually fading into more he heard about the human's biology. Most of the animals from there reach adulthood in the first year of life, shrugged the young man, returning his gaze to the stars. If there was one thing he thanked Sarah for. It was the documentaries she made him watch. Ever since, he had started to really digging into them. For example, horses. The ones we have in the stables start walking within half an hour of their birth, he added. Then the realization hit him. Wait, you're telling me you reached sexual maturity in fifty years old? Forty-five? You are incredibly rapid. No wonder your species was so fast. Are you sure it's not your species that slow? I mean, uh... You are like the elves from Lord of the Rings. It must be so interesting. It's a great book. I have a copy if you'd like. No, not that, you idiot. Peregrine clicked his tongue with a smile. I was talking about, uh, if you think about it, even the most basic flight technology is incredible. The technological success born from an impossible dream and a long trial and error, he said, looking at the stars. In the evening, when they sat together, like that after a long day of work, he often started talking about such things, like the beauty of technology or the greatness of the universe. What a poet, Aaron teased him. I once encountered a great elder who was from the time before flight, and he had such wisdom to share. But if your people change so rapidly, it means you must have even more stories to tell. The Athunon ignored him. Wait, you met someone from before your flight era? Drew, what do you mean? Someone who was born before my people invented our first flight technology. Sure, they're quite rare among us, but for you it must be a whole different thing. He smiled with a shrug. That humans could be a species of great and fast change and even greater wisdom had never really occurred to Pirigri. A whole new civilization of people who were quicker than everyone under every point of view was simply too much. He had lived among them for the past few months, and yet he had already seen many changes in their technology, like their new improved global connected network. Given another century, how much would they accomplish? The air alone made him quiver. What are you talking about? How? Well, I was on a trip over to Magrod, our home planet, and there I found a small restaurant on the road to a mountain refuge. And after a bit of chatting, I discovered the owner was actually a great elder. Man, he was awesome. He was one of the wisest beings I have ever met. I'd like to take you there someday. You'll love it, he said, his eyes shining with glee at the memory. But, uh, how? Shouldn't he be dead? Peregrine turned around with a gasp, a shocked expression on his face. That's horrible, Aaron. What? The stars? No, no, not, not in that sense. I mean, well... 
You know, Aaron started, searching for the right words. The alcohol and the fatigue didn't help him. You told me that you took over 2,000 years to go from pre-flight to FDL. And why the star should a great elder die for that reason? And that you became FTL a thousand years ago. Twelve hundred, muttered the lanky alien, crossing his arms. So, why is he still alive? Aaron, stop. It's not funny and really offensive. The human looked at his friend, whose short fur was now standing on edge in rage. He reminded him of a jellyfish for some reason, like the ones he had seen in the documentary Sarah had forced him to watch some days before. Ever since they started dating, he had learned more with her than when he did in school. Her dream was to be a researcher, and she often talked about the tea Nutricolor, a small kind of jellyfish, could be the key to lengthening their lifespans, seeing as it did not age or something like that. She often talked about many species across the galaxy who did not age. Harry, uh, how long does your species live? What do you mean? Aaron lowered his beer and took a deep breath as realization came to him. Without being killed or dying in accidents, how long does a healthy Asnon live? What's with the weird question? Please, answer me. It's important. Well, uh, we, uh, forever, uh, uh, don't change the subject. What you said was messed up. You don't joke about death of an elder, ever, even more so. Harry, we don't. His friend stopped arguing and looked at him. Only a twitch of the ear betrayed a sudden confusion with his anger. You don't what? We don't live forever. We die of old age. The Athenon stayed so silent that Aaron's brain almost registered him as inanimate. A single shooting star crossed the horizon, scratching from the firmament for an instant. What? We die of old age. Peregrine stared at him, those deep green eyes of his still as marbles, searching for any sign that it was a lie, hoping for something, a small gesture, a tick, anything, that would expose Aaron's twisted sense of humor, shrunk yet again. That his joke had got the alien for good, and now he could drop the act. Yet Aaron's face remained unchanged. He was telling the truth. There was no fear, no anger or envy in his voice. Not a droplet of bitterness, not even the resignation of criminal sentence to death. For him, it was just a summer evening on the porch. His face was relaxed, satisfied, one could say, if not for the distress brought by the conversation. He smiled, a gentle smile that put Peregrine off. How long? The buzz of the cicadas covered the wind. A sentry at most. The world stopped making sense to the Athenon, as if some untold law had just been broken. Humans were little more than flicks of light in the night. A lighter's small flame made to last a few seconds. In less than a century, the one in front of him would be lost to the flows of time. And it wasn't a disease or an accident. There was no cure, no prevention. Death would come to him, punctual and inevitable. Aaron would die, and Sarah would die. They would grow old and wither under the flow of time, like fruit flies, while Peregrine would observe from a sideway, external spectator to their laws of existence, free from the oppression of death shackling them. He would watch, powerless as the others marched to their end. Ultimately, he'd be the only one left. Piri would survive Aaron, and everyone else after him. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.